How to configure remote web clocking. Remote web clocking allows employees to clock in, out, and check their status using a web browser on any computer or web-enabled device, such as a smartphone. If you aren't sure if you have web clocking licenses available, you can check. Using the left pane main menu, under Administration, click on Clocking, then Remote Web Clocking. If you have remote web clocking licenses, they will be listed here. On systems with desktop clocking application licenses, the additional columns Desktop Clocking and Desktop Clocking Applications Using DTE License will appear. These are not part of the remote web clocking system. The ability to use remote web clocking is set per employee. This allows permitting some employees to clock from their PC or mobile device while requiring others to use a walk-up clock or telephone clocking. The Employees Selected counter at the bottom right displays the number of employees granted remote clocking access and the maximum number of employees available for remote clocking access. Here, seven employees have been granted access out of 100 licenses available. Note, you only see two of the employees checked or enabled on this screen because the other enabled employees are under other divisions. To grant remote clocking access to more employees on this division, simply check the web clocking box corresponding with those employees and click the Save Changes button. The computers and devices allowed to remote web clock can be restricted. This can be done with an IP whitelist. To set up the whitelist, click on the remote web IP address whitelist icon at the top of the page. Check out the remote clock IP whitelist article for instructions. Before setting up the remote clock, take a look at the current remote clock display. This is found by going to the left pane main menu and under tools, click on remote web clocking. Opening this in a new tab or window is also helpful so you can refer back to it and refresh the screen to see the changes. Now to set up remote clocking, click on the Remote Web Clocking Setup icon at the top of the Remote Web Clocking Administration page. You can choose to leave the logo graphic as is, upload a new logo, or restore the default logo. To upload a new logo, click on the Browse button, then navigate to and select the new logo. The new graphic will display once the Save Changes button is clicked. When the Remain logged in after clocking box is unchecked, the remote clocking interface will return to the login screen after displaying the employee's status for the status display time specified. Leave this box blank to disable this behavior. When the Remain logged in after clocking box is checked, the employee is able to clock again without requiring a username and password, whether it's after clocking in, clocking out, changing jobs, or checking status. The One Button interface uses a single button for clocking in and out and for changing jobs. The Default interface offers separate clock in, clock out, and change job buttons to specify which action to take. Leave this unchecked for the default version. When the Login with Badge Numbers box is checked, the remote clocking interface will require the employee's badge number instead of the employee's username and password. When the Accept Login on Status page box is checked, instead of returning to the login screen after displaying the employee's status, the remote clocking interface will accept another login on the same page. When the Enable Work Order Selector box is checked, the selection of work orders is available on the remote clocking interface, separate from the job list. Enabling this option will add JavaScript to the remote clocking interface. This is not recommended if you use older devices, browsers, or custom software to access this interface. This option is not necessary to choose a job associated with a work order. The default job list already provides this. Checking the Enable Prompt for a Work Order Completion box enables the prompt for the percentage of completion on work orders. 
Use this with the Enabled Work Order Selector option above. Checking the Enable Mobile Mode by default box enables extra large fonts and buttons designed to make clocking easier to use on a mobile device, such as a phone or tablet. Users can always switch which mode they prefer via the remote clock, and the system will remember their preference by device. If you would like to rename the job code field, type it into the box. Note that the IPS IPS module is required for job tracking. If you would like to rename the work order field, type it into the box. Here we rename it Project. If you would like to require job selection when employees clock in, check this box. If you would like to allow text input for job selection when employees clock in, check this box. When checked, the following two options will display. If an unknown job is typed into the text input job selector, choose which action to take. This will apply every time there is not an exact match. The default action is to disallow and create an error message. If you would like to flag the time event as a clock error upon clocking into an unknown job, check the flag clock error on unknown job box. If you would like to show recent punches when employees clock in, check the expand list by default box, as well as provide the number of days to include in the list. Remote clocking supports optional custom tracking fields. If you wish to add these, review the tracking fields article. To implement these changes, click the Save Changes button. Whether it's in a tab or another window, you can then refresh the Remote Clocking Interface page to see the changes.